Good day, good day, everyone. And once again, we're back together looking at that question paper from uh, November 2022. If you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family. And uh, right, let's get right into the question, right? So they say to us, we've got um, uh, Trolley X, which has a mass of 1.2 kilograms that travels at 8 meters per second, okay, uh, east and collides with a trolley Y, uh, with trolley Y of mass 0 0.5 kilograms, which is initially at rest. They say ignore all frictional effects. So they're trying to tell us that's an isolated system, right? So uh, the question says to us, uh, they say the velocity time graph below shows the velocity of the trolley before, during and after the collision, right? Uh, with trolley Y. Now, in this case, remember, we are looking at the graph that depicts trolley X, right? So all that we're looking at here has to do with trolley X. So meaning that trolley X before collision, so this would be the uh, point before collision, was traveling at 8 meters per second. This is during the collision, right? And then after collision, it means that it was now traveling at 4 meters per second, uh, still traveling east. OK, now, please remember, uh, it becomes very important for us to, uh, you know, choose a direction. So I'm going to maintain east as a positive uh, direction of motion. Right. OK, so let's start with the first question. They say state the principle of conservation of linear momentum. Please remember that in an isolated system, the total linear momentum is conserved or remains the same. Or you can say that in an isolated system, uh, momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision. All right, now let's go on to the next question. They say to us, uh, calculate the magnitude of the uh, velocity of trolley Y immediately after collision. Now, remember, we were given them, uh, you know, the uh, information for trolley X, right? So now we can look at trolley Y. Now, we just need to keep in mind that trolley Y before collision was at rest. So that becomes very important as well, right? And in this case, we want to know what happens to trolley Y, right? So um, let's just maybe make a depiction of what happened there. So there's trolley X, there's trolley Y, okay? So I know that trolley Y is at rest and trolley X is moving to the east, okay? So we said at eight meters per second, right? So that's eight meters per second. And then after collision, I know that trolley X would now move at four meters per second. Why? Because obviously some of that momentum uh, was lost to trolley Y, right? So here's our trolley Y. We want to find out what the uh, velocity of trolley Y would be after collision. So all we're simply going to say is that, well, the sum of the momentum uh, before collision, or you can say initial, is equal to the sum of their momentas after collision, right? So the mass of X, velocity of X initial, plus mass of Y, velocity of Y initial, is equal to mass of x velocity of x final plus mass of y velocity of y final right so let's try and substitute as much as we can uh, so we've got 1.2 and 0 0.5 in mass there so that's 1.2 multiplied by remember that's positive 8 okay plus now the momentum of y before collision remember would be 0 because the velocity of y was zero. So anything multiplied by zero would be zero, right? So in this case, um, uh, that's 1.2 times the velocity of y after, I mean of x after collision still is positive, but it's now become four, right? And of course, y is 0 0.5 and we're trying to find out the velocity uh, thereof, right? So VYF, right? So let's try and make that calculation. Okay, so we're going to say, right, 1.2 
times 8 and we're going to subtract 1.2 times 4 okay so that will give us 4.8 I believe right which is equal to 0 0.5 times VF or VYF so divide both sides by 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.5 and in this case we have VYF uh, to be 9.6 right meters per second right still in the positive direction we get a positive direction so in this case it means the velocity uh, sorry of uh, y would become 9.6 meters per second in this case still to the east that's very important okay right and then on the next question okay they say calculate um the average net force that trolley x exerts on trolley y during the collision now remember ladies and gents when we talk about the collision in this case right so um re we remember that we've got uh, the impulse momentum equation okay um sorry uh, change in p rather so we can calculate the change in mass i mean in change in uh, uh, momentum but in this case what would be the change in time so that we can get that force the change in time during the collision is from 20.2 to 20.1 so in this case it must be that the time difference when that collision took place was just 0 0.1 second right so what I'm simply going to do is say, well, let's find out uh, using the impulse momentum equation. That would be 4.2.2, right? Uh, so for 4.2.2, we're going to say F net times change in time would be change in momentum. So F net, remember we said our change in time was 0 0.1. Or if you want to indicate there, you can say 20.2 minus 20.1. Okay, that should give you 0 0.1 still, right? And now looking at trolley X in this case, we said uh, it was 1.2. Remember, change in momentum is mass times the change in velocity, which is VF minus VI, right? So that would, that would be 1.2 final velocity we said this would be four meters per second minus the initial velocity which would have been a positive eight meters per second right okay so we can divide remember this gives us just 20, uh, 0 0.1 i just want to make it easier for myself okay so i can divide both sides by 0 0.1 okay and in this case, what do we get for the average net force, right? Uh, all we do is just make sure we get our calculator. Okay, uh, so that gives us 1.2 into negative 4. Okay, 4 minus 8. Okay, and that gives us divided by 0 0.1. And that gives us negative 48 newtons of force now remember in this case uh, x would experience a force uh, in the opposite direction that's why x would have been slowed down right because the force would be opposing now note that they said uh, calculate the average net force so that means that we do need to uh, mention the direction right if they said the magnitude of the net force we would just need uh, just Put it in uh, you know just leave it there so 48 newtons in this case to the west that's the force that uh, trolley x would experience because of trolley y right now they ask the question is the collision elastic or inelastic and i say explain the answer by means of a suitable calculation now, please remember what is an elastic collision. It's, an, it's a collision that conserves kinetic energy. So it's where kinetic energy of the system stays the same, right? 
So what we're going to do is to take the sum of the kinetic energies, uh, rather of the two trolleys, right? So we're going to say the kinetic energy of trolley X, sorry, this is before collision. And then we're going to compare it with the kinetic energy of the, um, you know, of the system uh, after collision, right? Uh, EKX plus EKY. Um, so that's what, that would be half mass of X, velocity of X squared, plus half the mass of Y, velocity of Y squared, right? So the mass of X, we said, is... Uh, 1.2, right? So that's 1.2 times the initial velocity was 8. So that's 8 squared. Uh, half of 0 0.5. Remember, the initial velocity is 0. Uh, that is of trolley Y. Okay, so let's find out quickly the kinetic energy there. So that's... Uh, 0 0.5 times 1.2 times 8 squared, get a value of 38.4 joules, right? So that would be my kinetic energy. Okay, so before collision, the sum of the kinetic energy before collision. Okay, now after collision... Uh, we, it's still the same question. Some of their kinetic energies after collision. Okay. So, half the mass x, x squared, that is after collision, or you can say final, uh, plus half the mass of y, velocity of y, final. Remember to square that velocity, right? So in this case, that's half 1.2 times uh, 4 squared. That's half of 0 0.5. And we got the velocity of y after collision uh, to be 9.6, right? So that would be 9.6 squared. Okay. So... Uh, 0 0.5 times 12 times 4 squared uh, plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 9.6 squared. Okay, I get a value of 119. Whoa. 119.04 joules okay very strangely usually we lose energy but it seems this time uh, we gained energy right so what can we say so it means therefore this is an inelastic collision okay collision and why is that because kinetic energy before would not be equal to kinetic energy after collision, or rather I should say the sum of their kinetic energies, or you can just simply say kinetic energy is not conserved. All right, we leave it there, ladies and gents. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And of course, you can always get in touch with us, our website, mlungisinkosi.co.za, and you can now become a member as well and uh, benefit from those membership features. All right, I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.